Praise the Lord. Are you glad to receive the word? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Today's title of my word is, Have you established your position in Christ? That's my heart. Have you established your position in Christ? 2 Chronicles is a beautiful chapter of despair, of discouragement, yet it's a very melancholic chapter where the, you know, the people of Jehoshaphat and the people of Israel were surrounded by their enemies. And at the time they had no recourse to, they had their military prowess of Israel could not match the three armies coming against Israel. And at the time under the leadership of Jehoshaphat the king, you know, they did something very important that brought victory to the people of Israel. And we will understand that what was the secret of their victory that they could, you know, possess at the time of despair, at the time of fear, and at the time that they were totally disillusioned because they never knew what to do about the scenario because the multitudes of armies were coming against the house of Israel. And so I will encourage you this day because there was three important things that the Lord told them to do at that time. And I would focus your attention to the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, verses 14 to 17. And from where I have taken the title of my word, Have You Established Your Position in Christ? Right? And it says there, then, if you don't have your Bibles, you have it on the screen. But there may be some scriptures I may, you know, you know, just I would be prompted to speak. And I will read it to you from my word and you can look into your Bibles if you have one. But if you don't, there is a scripture up on the screen for you to see. <laughs> Then the Spirit of the Lord, it says the Spirit of the Lord, say the Spirit of the Lord, came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeriel. I like the lineage, right? There are three lineages instantly given by this writer of two chronicles. Three lineages, instantly and immediately these lineages were given. He says, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, and the son of Mataniah. Wow. A Levite of the sons of Asaph in the midst of the assembly. And he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. You know, when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you are under the unction to speak forth. You are under the authority to speak forth the word that God is laying into your heart. You know, when you are under the baptism and the unction of the Holy Spirit, you are empowered, you are equipped to speak forth what God is laying into your spirit. And this man, Jehaziel, who was an unknown man, who was a man of the prophets, but unknown man, he didn't have a big name in the Bible. He did not, he was not called as one of the great prophets. But the Spirit of the God came upon him in the time of distress. There was a time of preparation that was appointed by Jehoshaphat in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And we find that in the time of preparation, Jehoshaphat has proclaimed a fast. Jehoshaphat has sought his face because he was fearful of the multitudes of the armies that was coming against the people of God. And so he said he proclaimed a fast. He ordained a day of fasting and praying. And at the time when they were prepared, after the time of preparation, the Spirit of God came upon Jehoshaphat. And it is important for us to understand when there is corporate preparation, when there is corporate preparation, you will understand that the power of God will come upon you and it can come upon anybody at the time when there is a corporate preparation that God is about to set you for a mighty victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What God is going to do, He is going to set you for a mighty victory. And I know of late that by the power of the Spirit of God, people are prepared. They are prepared in fasting. They are prepared in praying. They are praying unto the Lord God Almighty. And corporately, God is positioning you to receive the mighty miracle upon your life. And He's not positioning you individually, but He is positioning you by the power of the Holy Ghost corporately that you will enter into your victory that God has so ordained for the people and for the house of the living God. Amen. Amen. And that's what God is doing. So he said what? In verse 15. And he said, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat. You know, when the power of God comes upon a man, he has the 
authority and the audacity and the boldness to speak forth of the Lord, the word of God mightily the way he, it has to be spoken. And he addresses, he addresses the inhabitants of Jerusalem and he says, you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you. Do not be afraid, not dismayed because of this great multitude. What was the message? Do not be afraid. Hallelujah. Say, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And say, do not be dismayed. Do not be dismayed. Because of this multitude. Because of this multitude. Hallelujah. You know, that was the word that came forth. You know, and it is a word of encouragement. You know, when you are encompassed with fear, when you are encompassed with enemies all around you, you can only succumb to your fears and say, hey, you know, and fear can paralyze you and you do not know what to do. And that's the time when the Spirit of God wants to manifest upon your life. Yeah. Yeah. When the Spirit of God manifests upon your life, He encourages you and He says, fear not. And I like that word, fear not. Yeah. Do not be afraid, not dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours. Say battle is not yours. Come on. Not yours. Say battle is not mine. Battle is not mine. But the battle belongs to the Lord. Battle to the Lord. Come on, it should excite us. A battle that we face in our lives are not ours. Amen. But a battle that we face every day in our lives, it belongs to the Lord God Almighty. As long as you walk in tandem with God, as you walk in the of the Spirit of God. The battle is not yours. The battle belongs to God. And when battle belongs to God and He takes charge over the battle, victory is promised to His people. Amen. I like that. He says, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow, go down against them. Say tomorrow. Tomorrow. You know, I'm saying all these words because, you know, today you may be in despair, but tomorrow the sun will shine. Today you may be in a tunnel, but at the end of the tunnel there is light. Today you may be going through the valley of despair and of fear and of death and every sickness, but tomorrow the light will shine and tomorrow you will be made whole by the power of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. That's what is happening. Today and tomorrow I'm with you, but on the third day I will show my power unto you. That is the word of God unto his people. So tomorrow, go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of seas. And you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. I like my God who tells me not to fight in this battle. Sadly not to fight in this battle. Come on. It doesn't mean that you will not show up for the battle. It means that you know, you need to play your part of showing up for the battle. For God to fight your battle. God will not fight a battle without the army. Come on. The captain of the army, the captain of the army of host of the, of, of the Lord God Almighty will not go into the battle until and unless the army shows up. And it is it is more important that the army shows up for the battle. That's what God is calling His church to be. He's calling that the church is the Lord's army. We are called and we are enrolled and we are enlisted in the army. Whether you like it or not, the day you said Jesus is my Lord, you are in the armies of God. Amen. And you are called to show up for the army. You are called to show up for the battle. You cannot take a vacation. Come on. When you are in the barracks and you are given a silent assignment, whether it feels good or not, whether you are in sorrow or despair or not, but it does matter that you show up for the war because it is mandatory that everyone that is enrolled in the army has to show up in the battleground. When you show up in the battleground, God says, I will fight your battle. You will not even have to unsheath your sword because I have promised to give you the victory. Amen. And I like my God of battles. And I like my God of war. Who fights my battles on my behalf. And he shows himself mighty on my behalf. When he arises, the enemy has to be scattered. Amen. When God says you will not have to fight, I will fight. There is a miracle that you can never, never have imagined is awaiting you at that moment of time. Because God is going to meet you at the point of your need in such a way that the enemy that you have seen today, you will see that enemy again no more. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You will not need to fight in this battle. And then the three things. Prophet, 
says, position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Come on, let's repeat it, right? Position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. So what God is saying, hey, position yourself. That's why where my talent comes from. Have you established a position in Christ? Is God is saying, position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. And I like that. When there are battles, when there are wars, and when there are war zones, you need to show up in the battle so that God can fight the battle for you because God is with you and He's saying position yourself. That means you will be in a state of preparedness. You will be prepared to fight a battle. You will be prepared to show up with the captain of your faith. You will be prepared to move in the ranks. You will be prepared to take over the territory in the name of Jesus. At the command of the master, you will be prepared to do what God has called you to do. You will not stay at home. You will not have a picnic. You will not have a party when it's time to wage war. That's what God is saying. God is saying position yourself. Position yourself in the battlefield. And God is saying that you will stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them for the Lord is with you. I like my God who is with me. Say, my Lord is with me. My Lord is with me. When God is for me, come on, say, come on, when God is for me, who can be against me? Come on, say, when God is for me, who can be against me? For God is with us. Who can be against us? Amen. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? If you believe, say, Because I believe it. Yes. You know, throughout the history, the records of warfare show that the armies that usually held the higher ground would often be victorious in the battles. Mm -hmm. It is very important. Armies that held the higher ground were always victorious. You know, therefore, it would be no accident that the commander of the army would look for the ascent and would like to position themselves on the mountain tops, on the hilltops. Why? Because your enemy that comes in fighting against you on the hilltop, by the time they reach the hilltop or the mountain top, they are already exhausted with that terrain that they have to climb and overcome. Mm. So that they are already easily a prey in your hand in their defeat. Mm. And that's why, you know, it is very important, you know, that why we have to position ourselves on a higher ground. Remember that. Position yourself and also position yourself on a higher ground. Now it's not written there on a higher ground. But I will give you a higher ground a reality picture from the scriptures. Because right from the beginning, you know, there were mountain tops. The mountain top of Peniel where Jacob wrestled with God. And he said, Lord, you will not bless me till you have not blessed me. I will not let you go. And he wrestled with God till he was blessed. On the mountain top, Moses received the Ten Commandments. And when he came down into the valley, he found that under the compromising leadership of Aaron, the people of Israel had already made a golden calf. And they were dancing in orgies before this golden calf. There is secret in the mountain top. The victories are won in the mountain top. The glory of the Lord is higher and thicker on the mountain top. When the rain falls, the rain is thicker on the mountain top. Because at the mountain top, you meet the mighty presence. of the living God. Amen. Amen. And God desires that every person will have a time-to-time -time experience of a mountaintop experience because at mountaintop God gives you strategies against your enemy. And every battle that you face, God gives you a strategy against that enemy how to wage that battle. There is no one formula in the Bible how to wage your battle. Mm. But there is from time to time, occasion to occasion, battle to battle, God give you his mandate and God will give you his vision and God will give you his strategy that is exactly and according to the battle plan for that particular battle and that's why we need to have the mountain top experience that we'll go down on our knees and say Lord give me rest and give me vision oh father from this enemy give me rest from all my enemies in the name of Jesus oh father hallelujah there were times when Abraham was on the mountain top. There were times when David ran on the mountain top. There were times when Daniel will always be on the right on the top of his room and he will pray with his windows open towards Israel. And he lift up his hands unto Lord God Almighty, though he was in captivity, but he prayed. Praise the Lord. You know, that is 
a secret. It doesn't matter whether you are free or whether you are captive. But it does matter that you are experiencing a mountaintop experience in your life. Because if you have a mountaintop experience, I promise you, God will give you an exact strategy how to wage a warfare. Amen. And how to win those battles against the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. That's what God desires. You know? Hmm? Strategic positioning for the battle could mean the difference between victory and humiliating defeat. It depends how we position ourselves. When a trumpet is given, when a weekly mail is sent, when an SMS goes, when somebody calls you, where were you brother? It's a sound of a trumpet. You show up for the battle. When you have showed up here today, you have showed up for the battle. And I promise you that tomorrow when you see the victory in your workplace, victory in your marriage, victory in your health, victory in your children, victory in your future, because God desired that you will walk in the victory of the living God. Hallelujah. There are times appointed by Lord God Almighty. Show up. Show up. Position yourself. Today morning you position yourself in the house of God. When you raise up your hands and praise and worship the Lord and sing and pray unto the Lord God, you are positioning yourself spiritually to face your giants and God is going to destroy your giants for you. Amen. You will not even have to take a sling and strike the giant down because you will already see your enemy dead and scattered all over the valley of Barak. That's what is going to happen. Right? So the question is, how does strategic positioning play a part in the life of Christian today? Every Christian, every Christian is a warrior. Say, I'm a warrior. Come on. Warrior. Come on, we need to have a militant spirit. What is the militant spirit? We don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against the powers and the principalities of devil, of Satan, of satanic powers, of rulers and spiritual powers in the high places that work against us. We fight those battles in the name of Jesus. Therefore, we need to position ourselves correctly. And when we position ourselves correctly, we see the glory of God descend over our lives. Hallelujah. Right? You know, in battle after battle, when Israel sought God, He gave them a battle plan by which to confront the enemy. You know, and in this battle, Israel would face against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. There are three armies coming together. Hmm? And God gives them specific instruction as what to do. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. I like my God. And this is not the first time God is giving the same strategy. But earlier also God gave the same strategy through Moses. In the book of Exodus chapter 14 verse 13 and 14. If you will see with me quickly. It's not for you on the screen. But it is there for you on your Bibles. And I will read it for you. In the book of Exodus chapter 14 verse 13 and 14. And Moses said unto the people. Fear you not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on. The armies that you see today, you will see your enemy again no more. Yes. Say, I will see my enemy no more. I will see my enemy no more forever. You need to believe it in your heart. Yes. <coughs> you know, that's what he said to Moses, fear not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will show to you today. Today, say today is the day of my salvation. Today is the day of my salvation. The victory you will see today, not tomorrow. Yeah, Come on. See today, not tomorrow. today is your day of salvation. Today is the day of my victory. Today is the day of my healing. Today is the day of my encouragement. Today is the day that I will receive my bonus. Today is the day that I will get my new job. Today is the day that I will see victory. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Not tomorrow. Today. Today. The enemy that you have seen today, you will see that enemy again no more. Yeah. Well, I like my God. And he says, the Egyptians you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. And the Lord shall fight for you and he shall hold your peace. I like my God. Yeah. Who's going to fight for you? My God is going to fight for me. Do you wage your battles in your own strength or you allow God to wage battles for you? And fight it for you? And that's the question. That we need to ask. And a lot of times we are warring ourselves. We are struggling. We are working in the flesh. And the moment we work in the flesh, we don't see victory because our emotions come and play. Our you know anger comes and play. Our everything comes and play and goofs up our lifestyle with God. But God is saying, Hey, why are you so anxious about your war? You know, cast your burden unto me because I will not allow the righteous men to perish. Hallelujah. So are you facing a burden? Are you facing a difficulty? 
difficult situation comes to them to me, God is saying, because I will give you the victory in your situation. Yeah. That's what God is saying. There is no big mountain that I cannot you know, help you to overcome it. There is no great valley that I will not allow you to go through it and be there with you so that no scorpion and no snake will ever bite you. And I will still protect you. There is no fire that will quench you. There are no rivers that will overwhelm you. Because I am your God. You are my precious son. And you are my precious daughter. If I put my hand upon you, then I will also make sure that I will see you through on the other side. That's what God says. So we say position yourself, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. You know, the word position comes from the Hebrew word yatsal. And it means to place, to set, to stand, to set or station oneself, to present oneself. To present oneself for what? You know, when there's a call for worship, you present yourself. When I call for night vigil, you present yourself. When I call for worship practice, you present yourself. When there is a call for fasting and praying, you present yourself. You position yourself immediately because the trumpet has blown and you position yourself. The moment you position yourself, you are positioning yourself for victory. Amen. Amen. That's what God does for you. So position often defines a situation or set of circumstances, especially one that affects one power to act. And I'll repeat that statement again. Listen carefully. Hmm? Position often defines a situation or set of circumstances, especially one that affects one's power to act. That's what it is. It is usually established through a person's particular point of view or attitude towards something. That is your perspective. Amen. What perspective? You know, Arlene was sharing the word of Miracle Mondays about, you know, the, the, the ten spies brought an evil report, the two spies got the best, best report. And the tribes of Joshua and, Ken, uh, and Caleb were also not saved. They did not believe their own leader. Only two men got saved. Can you imagine? They paid heed to the gossip. They paid heed to the negative report. They paid heed to the evil report. They did not open the ears to what the men of faith of Joshua and Caleb were saying. And today the voice of faith is being drowned by every negativism around the world. What happens is it douses, the negative spirit douses the faith that is inside of you. Then what is the negative spirit? World economy is collapsing. What is the negative spirit? There are no jobs now anymore. What is the negative spirit? There is lack of food in the world. Yes, that is the reality. That is the facts of life. But that is not the truth for the people of God. Amen. The reality is that many people are dying of cancer. The reality is that many people are dying of AIDS. But let me tell you the truth is that by the stripes of Jesus and in the name of the living God, every cancer shall die. Amen. And the life-giving cells are propagated. Every age disappear. And I've seen people healed of AIDS and cancers and come back from the comas and living and glorifying God. And I've seen people who have been raised up from the coffin boxes and today they are serving the living Christ. Why? Because yes, the fact is that he was dead, but there is power in the name of the living Jesus. Amen. So we are not governed by our facts. We are governed by the truth of God's word. Jesus said you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Hallelujah. There is no other way but one way. And that is the way the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in the book of Philippians 2, 9 to 11, that every knee should bow in heaven, should bow on earth and should bow below the earth. That at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee should bow. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Amen. It is mandatory for the people that they will bow their knees and they will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. And today all the seraphims and the cherubims and the archangels and the angels and the living creatures that are in heaven, they bow before the King of glory, before the Lamb of God saying, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Yes. Come on, somebody can say hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the sound of heaven. And every knee will bow on earth. Four million people bow their knees today in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Soon all the seven billion people will bow whether they like it or they not like it. But praise be to the Lord those who have bowed the knees today. Because today is the day of their salvation. Then it will become too late. Then it will become too late. Now is the time. 
time of your salvation. Now is the time that you will make a decision to follow the Lord and the Savior of your soul, the Lord Jesus Christ, not tomorrow. It will become too late. There will be only the judgment seat before the presence of God. Whether you like it or not, you will still bow your knees and then you will be judged of your works and of your faith that you had before the presence of God. But today is the day of your salvation. That's what God is calling us. That's what God is looking his people to. Hmm? So what is your perspective? That's your positioning. That means in mental attitude, you are so determined that no matter what happens, I am determined to make an impact in the army of God. Come on. That's what it means. Positioning is a mental positioning that you say, I am so determined that no matter what comes, I will take the war into the enemy's camp. Come on. Hallelujah. God is looking for warriors who will take the war into the enemy's camp. You will not wait for the enemy to attack you. You will take the war into his territory and destroy him there. And the stronghold will be put down in the name of Jesus. Come on. That's what God is looking for people. They will not wait for some affliction to come. They will not wait for some tragedies to afflict you. They will not wait for some jobs to be lost. They will not wait for some enemy to strike you. And then you will cry out unto the Lord for salvation. No, but you have positioned yourself that whether there is any affliction or no affliction, whether the enemy is attacking or not attacking, but I will take the attack into the enemy's territory in the name of Jesus. Come on. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Yeah. Somebody say that I am. Enough, enough that the enemy has played games with the body of Christ. But now the church will arise and take the war into the enemy's camp. Yes. Hallelujah. That's why you are enlisted. That's why you are enrolled into the armies of God. Hallelujah. And he desires that you will be blessed. So your position mentally in such a way that you want to take the victory at any cost. Hallelujah. And then it says... Next, God tells us to do what? First, position yourself and they say, stand still. The word stand comes from the Hebrew word amad. And it connotes several meanings. To stand still, to stop moving or doing anything, to cease, to tarry, that is to wait, to delay, to remain, to continue. I believe it is to abide, to endure, to persist, to be steadfast. That's what I believe. You know, it best defines God's intent for his people as it is expressed in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verses 13 to 14. He says, watch, watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong, let all that you do be done with love. You know, that's what Paul is writing to the Corinthians church. What he's saying, watch, stand fast in the faith. Be brave, be strong. That's what he's saying. That's what God is saying. Stand fast in your faith. Don't waver. Don't worry what the world is saying. Don't worry what your report you're getting in your workplace. Don't worry how many people have been chopped and axed off their jobs. Don't worry about that. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter. Don't worry what bird flu is happening or what chicken gunia is happening. Don't worry about that. You will still eat the chicken in the morning and chicken in the noontime and chicken in the nighttime. Amen. Bird flu is for the people outside the world who are without the faith in Christ. But we are the people of the living God. Therefore God is saying, what do? Position yourself and stand still. Stand still. That means if you have put your feet on the ground, you will not move. No matter what the storm comes, no matter what the pestilence comes, you will fight your battle head on. You will never show your back to the enemy. Amen. 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 Come on, let the Africans say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The men don't marry the women till they have killed the lion. They know how to fight the battle, the Maasai people. Come on. Till now, that tradition goes on. If a young man has killed a lion, then only he is entitled to marry a woman. Because then they have to face the lionesses all the time. <laughs> So kill the lion first so they can face the lioness later. <laughs> then you are entitled to get a lioness. Yeah. That's what the Messiah is saying. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Are you glad to be in the house of God? Yeah. Are you willing to take on to the lions of this world? Yeah. And destroy the ones who are counterfeiting the image of God and giving a false roar and saying, hey, come on, I roar against you. 
and he show your back and the enemy pounces on you easily and you're dead meat. No, we will arise from the coffee, fight a battle, and we will fight the enemy. He has to run away in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right? So says, Paul is saying, walk, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. Lastly, God tells us Israel to see the results of their obedience. Yeah, that's what God is telling Israel. To see what? The results of your obedience. What are the results of your obedience? The results of the obedience is you go, can go back home and read 2 Chronicles chapter 20 at home at peace and meditate upon it after this word. After that we find that you know when they had just gone to that place to see in the valley of, in the, in the, in the, in, in the, in the oasis of Tekoa, you know, and they were all there in that place and then you know what happened is they found that all these enemies were discomforted by God. You know why? Because these people went to see and they saw that all the dead bodies were lying down. What happened? They fought against each other. All these three armies, the armies of Ammon, the Moab, and of Mount Seir fought against each other, killed themselves, and they were dead meat even before Israel could put an eyes. What vision do you have about your enemy today? Do you see enemy dead already? Or you just see enemy alive before your presence? <laughs> When God gave the vision to the Israelites, when they came up to see the enemies where they were, they found them dead. Say, my enemy is dead. My enemy is dead. Mm -mm. You don't believe it. Come on. Your enemy is? Yeah. Hallelujah. Enemy is? Yeah. That's what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Yes. He made an open spectacle of the devil and made a public, you know, uh, a display of his shame and he crushed him under his feet and killed him for good. He is the defeated foe. Say, my enemy is the defeated foe. Oh, Amen. Amen. So what do you see? The question is, what do you see? Oh, pastor, you know, pray for me. All the problems are coming for me. You know, they call the pastor in the night and the daytime and the daytime and the night time. Every day, praise the Lord for amazing grace. They don't call me anymore. They pray themselves. I'm not saying don't call me. <laughs> you can call me to find out, Pastor, how are you doing? Hmm? But what is happening is, <clears throat> you are fighting a battle and you're seeing victory and you come back and give a report, my Lord was with me and I saw the salvation of my God. Amen. So what do you see, your enemy? Ever since the Lord has saved me, I've never seen devil ever come against me in any way that can ever overpower me. Yeah. Ever since when I had given my life to the Lord, there has never ever been fear that came over and gripped my heart ever. Whether there were legions of demons or one demon, whether one demon was jumping or dancing or someone were coming out like a snake, it didn't matter. Because I knew the authority that is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Every demon has to shudder and run away in the name of Jesus. And the power of Satan has to be destroyed in the name of Jesus. When the lion of the tribe of Judah roars, there has to be victory. And there is victory. Because when God gives me a victory, no Satan can come against me. Hmm? So what was the obedience? The result of obedience. Because Israel listened to the voice of God. Huh? What is the condition? Because you hearkened to the voice of God. Obedience. Mm -hmm. If you are willing and obedient, as Isaiah 119 says, then you will eat the good of the land. Say, I will be willing and I will be obedient. I will be willing and I will be obedient. Mm -hmm. So when they listened to the word of God, and they positioned themselves, that, that, that is, they set their minds and presented themselves. What is that? Girding up the loins of your mind and presenting yourself in the battle. That's what is the call. Hmm? That you're determined no matter what happens, whether I sleep in the night or not, I will be in the house of God. Come on. That is the positioning in your coconut. Are you with me? What is the positioning in the coconut? That no matter what happens with me, I will show up. Hallelujah. So you are positioned in your mind. You are so determined in your mind. Whether you play cricket in the night or no cricket in the night. Whether you are having some party time in the night or no party time in the night. I will show up. That's positioning. That's determination in your mind. That no matter who comes or who goes, I will be there presenting myself before the armies of God. Before the captain of my faith that he will win the battle for me. Amen. Amen. And they stood fast in God's word that they would witness God's provision. 
Right? They were holding fast to God's word. What he was saying, you will win the battle. I will win it for you. I have destroyed your enemies. So they held on to the promise. And that is equals to salvation. Right? That's what God was saying. What he was saying? Position yourself, stand still, and see what? The provision of God, the salvation of God. Right? So what is the salvation of God? God is saying. Now if you see here, again and again, the Greek word we have understood what salvation means. However, the good news is that in the Hebrew also, the word salvation means Yeshua. Praise the Lord. And it entails as meaning deliverance, prosperity, health, safety, welfare, and victory, all encompassed in salvation. That's why the Bible says, see the salvation of God. That means what you will see? You will see what? Deliverance from your enemy. You will see prosperity. You will have health in your body. You will be safe from any, any uh, calamity. You will have welfare, good welfare, and you will walk in the victory of God. It all is a package deal in the word salvation. So that leads us to one question. What does that have to do with us today? The Bible says and Paul was writing to the church of the Galatians and he was writing to them in the book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. He says stand fast therefore in the liberty. I like that word stand fast. What are you saying? He says stand fast. Stand fast. He says stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. What he's saying, do not go back to Egypt for help again. That's what he's saying actually. Right? When you see trouble, when you see famine, when you see dearth, when you see no water, when you see no rain, where do you run for help? Do you run to the worldly system for help or you run to the Lord God Jehovah Jireh for help? How many of you have read my weekly mail? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Should I send you weekly mail or shall I stop sending you weekly mail? <laughs> Hmm? Send you? Yes. Right, so please read it. Yes. I said, who do you look for help? You know why? Who do you look for? If you are not getting my weekly emails, register yourself. Go online on the website. And there is a way to register your email ID and you will start getting the, the emails. My weekly emails to you. Register yourself. You will be blessed. Whom do you look for help? I, I made, I made a, a small uh, you know, a script there and sent it across to you. You know, it is very important that we, who do we look for help? It says, stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. What is it? The freedom, the liberty. Who has made us free? The captain of our faith, the Lord Jesus Christ. We were bound, we were in slavery. We were under the yoke of Pharaoh. We were under the yoke of Egyptians. We had hard labor. We had to even build the bricks when there was no hay and there was no straw. We had to labor hard and work hard. And it says, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That means don't go back and again fish for your sins that God has buried under the sea. Don't go back again to those addictions that God has liberated you from. Don't go back to lying and sinning again where God has set you free from. Don't go back into those areas where God has delivered you from. The bondage. Yes. That's what he's saying. Only you can determine your position. Nobody else. Your pastor cannot determine position for you. Your spouse cannot determine the position for you. It is in the sheer act of your will that you will position yourself to do and set yourself for victory. Yeah. God told Israel to position themselves. No one other than you can control your free will. No one. Even God cannot. Are you with me? God has not made you puppets. That he'll pull one string, two string. Today he blesses you. Tomorrow he visits you with tragedy. No. No, 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 no. There is no evil that comes forth from my God. My God is a good God. My God is a gracious God. My God is a kind God. My God is a merciful God. My God is a God who healeth me of all my disease. My God is a God who provides me of all my needs and my wants and my desires. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My God does not visit me with evil things. It is Satan who comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. But Jesus says, I have come to give you life and life more in abundance. John 10.10 10 talks about it. Right? So any evil that comes to you or strikes you is not from God. God doesn't desire that. God doesn't desire that his children will be hurt. But God desires that children will walk in victory. God desires that children will be positioned. 
God desired that the children will stand still and God desired that they will see the salvation of the living God. And the salvation encompasses all these blessings that the word means in Hebrew and also in Greek. People can be forced to do many things. But once you set your mind to do something, no one can change that mind. Are you? Mm. Hmm? It's very important. Even God cannot change it if you are not willing to change. Yes. That means you have to submit your will to the will of the Father and say, Lord, have mercy upon me because I desire a change. Mm. And that's the biggest and the best prayer that we can ever make. Say, Lord, change me. Right? Change me. Deal with my heart, O oh Lord. See if there is any iniquity in me, O oh Lord. See if my hands are clean, O oh Lord. And my hearts, a heart is without guile and my mouth is without any guile, O oh Lord. See it, O oh Lord. Check my heart. We can only pray that prayer, Lord, you know, change me. And God will change you. And God will bless you and honor you. And strengthen you. Right? If this was not true, then everyone would have been saved. Because this is God's desire that everyone would be saved. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 to 4. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 3 to 4 For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior Who desires all men See the desire of God He desires what? All men, all men To be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth He desires that all men irrespective of their religion Irrespective of their background Irrespective of who they are and what they are And how evil they are Or probably what they have done the worst Irrespective of the background He desires that they will be saved That is the desire of God And we need to understand That God desires that all will be saved And once we are positioned Once we are standing We will see that the enemy will be defeated And the wealth will be transferred Into the hands of God's people What is the wealth? Wealth of souls even material wealth, even other wealth, all wealth will be transferred. Right? Are you waiting for wealth transfer? Yes. If you will position yourself, you are so determined that nothing will budge you. You are so determined no matter what happens to you, that you will show up and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I promise you that you will see the wealth transfer soon into your hands. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. So when we yield our will to His will, then only salvation will be witnessed. Only through an act of our will can we position ourselves to receive God's grace and His salvation through Jesus Christ. That's how, what does the word metanoia mean? Huh? The change of mind. The change of mind. God has saved your spirit, but is your mind aligned to God's word? Is it conformed to the likeness of his word so that you will be transformed into the likeness of his son, Jesus Christ? Confirmation of you to the word of God is equals to transformation of you into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Amen. The more you get conformed in your thinking to the word of God, the more you believe it into the promises of God's word. If God says so, even it is beyond your comprehension. It will be done. It will be done. Amen. And you need to simply believe. If God says so, you will say to the mountain and it will cast itself into the sea, then you need to believe. Yes. Amen. Amen. Any mountain that you face and you have the power to believe and to say, you cannot receive without believing. Come on. It is first believing than receiving. Amen. So the moment you believe that yes, I can speak to the mountain, no matter what the mountain is, the mountain of sickness, mountain of poverty, mountain of curses, mountain of whatever, it doesn't matter. It has to depart from you in the name of Jesus because you are speaking to that mountain in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that's what is going to happen. Ephesians 2, 11 to 13 says, Therefore remember that you, once Gentiles, in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands that at the time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world but now I like that word but the ifs and buts of the Bible are beautiful but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Say so thank you Jesus for your blood. Thank you Jesus for your blood. 
Allah said, Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you Allah. Yeshua, for your blood. Thank you, Yeshua, for your blood. Once I was far off, but now I have been brought close to God Amen. the Father yes, Lord. because of your blood. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's what God has done. So the question is, how do we position ourselves to see God's deliverance, safety, prosperity, healing, welfare, and victory? Correct? We all desire all these things. Who doesn't desire? If anyone would, if you ask a papa also sleeping on the street side, he'll say he desires all these things. Yeah. Who doesn't want all these things? Everyone wants. They all want deliverance. They all want safety. They all want prosperity. They all want healing. They all want welfare. And they all want victory. It is in the character in every human being. You do not like to be subdued. You do not like to be harassed. You do not like to live in affliction. You like to live prosperously and in a blessed state way in the welfare of God. Yeah. So how do we do it? The Bible says in Philippians 2, 12 to 30. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, See what Paul is saying to the Philippian church? As you have what? Always obeyed. I like that word. Say always obeyed. Always obeyed. Always obeyed. Come on, say loudly. Always obeyed. Amen. Hallelujah. Not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Then he says, work out. Say work out. Work out. Your own salvation with fear and trembling. Huh? For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Yes. It is God who desires that you will be flourishing and you will be prospering before his presence. So what do you have to do? Huh? Correct? Right? That is what workout means. What's that Robin? How many push-ups you do? Wait. <coughs> Ask all these brothers. Sunil, how many you do brother? Push-ups. Huh? Workout. If you are so interested in physical workout, you should be more interested in spiritual workout. Why? Because you have a spiritual warfare that you are engaged in 24 by 7. I'm not saying don't go to the gym, but you have the spiritual discipline in your life also so that you will see the victory. And Paul says, work out your own salvation. What is saying? Your own salvation. Say own salvation. Own How? Salvation. With godly fear and trembling. Oh I like that. Huh? That's why the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 11 verses 2, 3 and 4 it says, Jesus Christ was then used with what kind of spirit? The spirit of wisdom and understanding and knowledge. The spirit of counsel and might and the spirit of the fear of God. And he was quickened in the fear of God. And then the New Testament also talks about the spirit of grace and supplication. Amen. That's why Jesus has got intercession. He's an intercessor. And he's even today praying for you and for me on the cross of Calvary. Right? So what we need to have? Huh? The fear of God and trembling. When we hear God's word, we need to tremble. Huh? We don't take the chi we don't cheapen the grace of God. Come on. If the terrorists can be so determined to blow themselves up with a bomb for their God and for their cause, how much more a Christian needs to be determined? With the love gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. This brings life. That brings death. This brings life. Yes. Amen. Amen. When it brings life, how much more we need to be determined to bring life to the hurt in humanity. Yes. If they are willing to kill others, we are willing to give life to others. Amen. 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 And the life is a Zoe kind of life. God kind of life. The, li the kind of life that Jesus has. That kind of life we are called to give. So workout comes from a Greek word which in word which means labor for. Hmm? It means to toil, to acquire. I like that word. Hmm? To do the work fully. Fully. You start the work and finish the work. You don't leave it midway. You have put your, put your hand in the plow, you not look back. You will press on towards the goal that God has given you. And you will see the victory. You will not withdraw yourself. Huh? The Bible says anyone who withdraws from me, God will not have pleasure in him. Right? In the book of Hebrews it talks about it. Don't withdraw from God. Don't withdraw from the unction that the Lord has placed you. Don't withdraw from the ministry that God has given you. Don't withdraw from the work that God has given you. If you have put your hand into the plow, press on. That's what the word workout means. That if I put my hand into the plow, I will not look back. I will continue to press.
cloud. I will continue to move forward. I will continue to do as long as the Lord will keep me there. I will continue to do that. <coughs> Amen? Amen? Mm. That's what it says. Don't withdraw. Huh? So workout means what labor for? To toil. It's a verb. It's an action word. To toil. To acquire. Do work fully. So positioning yourselves is a work out action of establishing our will. What did I say? Positioning ourselves is a workout action of establishing our will. It's the human will. It's Samuel Tressler's will. It is Benjamin's will. Are you with me? Right? It is Preeti's will. When you are determined, no matter what happens, I will worship the Lord. Bang. Right? It was the will of Paul and Silas in the jail in Acts chapter 16 that no matter they were in stocks, no matter whether they were beaten bad and they were thrown into the dungeon, they started to sing and praise the Lord. Come on. It is depending upon your will that you will not give up, you will not run away from preaching the gospel or planting churches, but you will continue to do what God has called you to, to do in spite of or irrespective of your circumstances. Right? So what you are doing is, you are undergirding your will that wants to worship the Lord, that no matter what happens, you will praise Him. No matter what happens, you will pray unto Him. No matter what happens, you will spend time in reading God's Word, studying God's Word, meditating upon God's Word, so that your faith will be undergirded by the power of the Rima, of God's Word. And that's what God desires. Hmm? So once we have positioned our will, we have positioned ourselves. What is positioning? Right? Jesus positioned his will. In the garden of Gethsemane, when he got down on the knees and he started to pray and he wept and wept and wept and his sweat came out and his sweat turned into blood, the Bible says. Right? He, he, he earned and yearned in his spirit and he said, Lord, you know, please take this cup away from me. You know? Good Friday is coming soon. Easter is coming soon. Right? Please take this cup away from me. Lord, please take up it. I do not want to take that. In all his humanity, he wouldn't and he did not want it. Let me tell you. But what he did, he positioned himself. He submitted his will to the will of the Father and he said, Lord, not my will, but let your will be done. That's called positioning yourself in the perfect and divine will of God so that God can accomplish his purposes through your and my life. That's why we are vessels of honor. Say, I'm a vessel of honor. If you position yourself to become vessels of honor, if you position yourself like Jesus and submit your will to the will of the Father, His perfect and divine will will be completed. Imagine if Jesus wouldn't have died. I was happy today slaughtering the goat and bringing that and doing all those rituals of the Old Testament, of the sacrificial system. I had to pay a lot of money. I had to pay more than 42% of my income in tithes and offerings and free will offerings if I had to follow the law. Are you with me? Yes. That's how the, a Jewish person had to do. And according to the law of Moses, more than 42% of his income would go into the temple of God. Not 10%. 10% was only tithing. Their offering, then a free will offering, then another special offering, then another special tithing. Another, you know, three times they had to appear, they had to bring certain things before the presence of God. And then all the time they had to bring the blood for atonement of sins. Come on. Right? But Jesus did not. He cancelled that for me. He fulfilled that law and he became and he obeyed the will. He submitted his will to the will of the Father. And what happened? Hmm? What happened? How do we accomplish this task? We position ourselves by believing God's word. God says, I believe. You know there's one uh, placard in our house. What does it say? God says, I believe it. End of discussion. Something like that. Right? It's a beautiful thing. If God has said it, I believe it. No argument. God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. His word is settled in heaven. His word is settled here. That's why I need my wife. See, she reminds me all the time. <laughs> she reminds me of my birthdays, wedding anniversaries, and of all the people also. I forget. I don't remember dates. I've given that onus to my wife to remember. And she's been a good secretary to me. <laughs> How brilliant to have your wife as a secretary. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. So what it says, in essence what we are doing is that we position ourselves in faith. Right? 
and then we take everything that God has given us. Turn with me to the book of Ephesians, very quickly. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6, and verse, few verses, and then we will pray together. Ephesians, chapter 6. <clears throat> Ephesians 6 and verse 10. It says, Finally, brethren, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Say, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the violence of the devil. What is saying? You are able to stand. Not lie down. Not on a picnic. Right? And says there, Father down. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. After you have done everything, you will still be able to stand. You will not surrender, you will not cower, you will not sit down, you will not f fall flat, but you will still stand in your back. Amen? Say, I will stand. I will stand. Come on, half people said, I will stand. I will stand. Hallelujah. Stand therefore, again it says, verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. So what has to happen? The truth. What is the truth? This belt that I wear is the truth. Right? The belt of truth. That means I believe if Jesus has said he is the truth, he is the way, he is the life. His word is the truth. He is the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. He is the captain of my faith. He is my victor. He is my champion. If he says something, I will obey and I will walk in my victory. That is the truth. Right? So he says there, what? Stand therefore having a loyance girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparations of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation. What to take? Your coconut needs to have deliverance, safety, you know, all those things. Victory, health, wealth, prosperity. This is what my God, that's what I see at the end of my life. That's what I see, that my enemies are dead and lying there flat. That's what I see.